Hey everyone and welcome back to another video. In this video, we are going to discuss the container slash presentational pattern in JavaScript and we are going to go through a React application to do so. If you're not subscribed to the channel, do it right now as it really helps the channel grow. Without further ado, let's get started. So let me try to explain what we are looking for. We are going to have a list of projects from my GitHub profile that we are going to show just like this, one card per project, showing the stars and whatnot. And once you click on a particular project, this is how it would look. It would show the overview of this project. Now I kept everything very simple because we need to discuss the pattern rather than the actual implementation of the project itself. If you're interested in that, let me know in the comments and I might create a video on that as well. Now, if we try to understand the architecture of the project, this is how it looks like. We have the app component at the root, which should have a projects component. And in this project component, we would have multiple project cards. So this would essentially show a list of project cards. And then we have a project overview component also inside this projects component. Now, when we talk about the presentational or container components, it is also called smart and dumb components. So the container component is the smart component and a smart component is one which is aware of the data or where to fetch the data from. It usually doesn't have any sort of CSS associated with it unless you have a smart component or a container component that essentially has some UI itself. But most of the cases a container is basically fetching the data from a third party service or doing some other magic rather than just showing the data or being a presentational component. So projects component in this case is our container component which is going to be aware of where to fetch these projects from which is GitHub. So it is going to fetch the projects and then it is going to pass each project into this project card component and this project card component is essentially the presentational component or you could call it the dumb component. Similarly, when we click a project card, then we show the project overview and that is where this component comes in. So whenever we click a project card, how do we communicate that which project has been called to this component? For that, we are going to do some magic. We are going to emit a function from project card passing back to the component or the smart component, which will then pass something to this project overview. So it all goes from project card to its parent and then to the project overview. And when I implement that, you're going to see this. Now that we understand a bit of context or visually how this would look, let's get into the code. So as I mentioned, the top component is right now app component. You see that the application doesn't show anything right now. When you see this link, because it's already in the description of the video, you might see the final state of this project, but here we are just starting it. So first of all, what we need to do is that we need to go to the app component and here we need to import the project. So here we have the projects component and then here we are going to just assign this projects here. So now we have this projects component implemented, but it doesn't show anything because we don't have anything in the projects component. So we need to go to the projects component now and we are now going to do some stuff. You can see that we are already importing the project card and the project overview components here, but we are going to start with project card first. And we also have octocate and use effect and use state. So first of all, we are going to create state variables for this. As you can see, we are using use state and we are saying that, hey, we would have a projects array that will be basically rendered here where it says grid here. Now we are going to use the use effect hook and we are going to run it only once when the project starts. So we are going to assign empty dependencies to this. And then we are going to use octocate to get my project. So here you can see that we are using an octocate client and then we are providing my repository, which is code with SN and then the type is public. And when we get this from the GitHub API, then we log it on console. So if I open console right now, you can see we are already getting these 19 projects that we are talking about. Now that we have this, the only thing remaining is to render these projects here in the grid. So as you already suspect, we are going to run a loop over the projects array and we are going to use the project call within this array. So let me quickly do that. Here we now have the projects.map function which is essentially getting each project from the projects array that you can see here. And then we are basically rendering the project card by passing the item or the project as item prop. And if I go to the project card here, you will see that it expects an item prop and then it renders all of the detail of those items. For example, you can see here, we got the title. We also got the number of stars that you can see here. So all of that is right now being rendered in the project card component. So we have about 19 project cards right now being rendered within this project's component. So as you can see, this works. Now that we have this, you will notice that the responsibility of getting the data is still in 
in the projects component which we already discussed is our container component or a smart component so this Project card doesn't have any idea where this project is going to come from. All it needs is a project or the project object and it renders it. It has no other responsibility apart from just rendering the project itself. And that's pretty much it. That is the dumb component or the presentational component and its responsibility. Now let's talk about the clicking function. So when I click this particular card, I should be able to show this project overview component based on it. And to do that, I'm going to create a new state variable, which I'll call selected project. And we are going to also have a function to update that. And the idea is when I click a particular card, it should essentially set that particular project into this selected project variable. And then we should be able to render it into project overview. So I'm going to quickly use this selected project variable and show the project overview based on that scenario. Right now, you can see that we don't have any selected project. That's why it's not being shown. But what if I wanted to show this? So I could quickly maybe just assign the first one. So I could say set selected project and here I could say projects zero. And when we do this, you can see that automatically it is now rendering the first object. But again, we should be doing it on click and not like this. So I'm going to remove this for now. Now let's talk about how can we make sure that when we click a particular card, it sets the selected project so we can use it right here. So for this, we really need to have this project card having the ability to inform us if a project is clicked. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to introduce a new prop into this project card component. So I'm going to add one here. I'm going to say on project click and then here what we are going to do is that as soon as this article is clicked we are going to call this function so i'm going to quickly go here and add an on click handler here and then here i'm going to say hey just call the on project click method and when we do so we are going to go back to the projects and here we are going to now pass this function so we are saying on project click just set the selected project to project now the interesting part here is that we don't really need to pass this item or this project from here to projects because we already have that within the scope. So here you can see that we are running a loop over projects and we have this project variable. So all we need to say, hey, if we click this item or this project, we essentially just want to set the selected project to that project. So when I click here, you see that now it says 12 basics, although I cannot basically switch to anything else right now because this needs some more implementation. So I cannot now click on anyone else. Although if I refresh and if I click a different one, the first time I click, it's going to work. For example, let's go to ng hangman. If I click this one, you see that it shows the ng hangman one, which is good. Now let's talk about why this is not able to open any model again, because when we click this for the first time, it essentially sets the selected project to that project and it renders this. Then when we close the model, it still has the selected project set, but the project overview or the model itself hides so we cannot show it. And the project overview doesn't understand that we have closed the model. So we need additional functionality around it. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to basically pass this information of when a model is closed. For example, here in the project overview, you see that we already have this close model function, which is triggered whenever we close this model. So when I click here or if I refresh and try to do this again, you will see that when I click outside of the model, it closes itself just like this. So this is working here and it calls this function, but this project overview doesn't have any way of communicating this back to its parent, which is projects. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to pass another or create another prop here. And here we could say something like on model closed or something like this. If we do this, we can essentially call this function. And that means that now I can go to my parent component, which is projects. And here we can use the same function. So I can say on on model close and here I can pass this as a prop. So this on model close is supposed to be a function and this function is essentially going to set the selected project to null. When this happens, this is going to make this particular variable null, which means that now this is not going to show at all. And this component is going to get off the DOM, which means that now if I select another card, it will restart from scratch. So it will now go from a closed model or an initial state of the model to open state. So if I now save this and try this out, let's see what happens. If I click outside and if I click now, you can see that now it works perfectly because when I click outside of it, it essentially calls the on model close, which sets this selected project to null. And that's how this is hiding basically. So this hides and then this component goes out of the DOM completely. So now our whole application is working as expected. So I'm just going to summarize this for you again. 
This project's component is the container component or the smart component. Project card is a dumb component or a presentational component. And this project overview is also a presentational component since all they need is inputs and outputs and no idea whatsoever of what to do when we interact on something. For example, when we click outside or when we click on a particular card, the card itself, this project itself does not know that it needs to show the project overview. This project card component does not have the responsibility to do anything. All it does is that it passes this value from the component itself to its parent via this function or this method that we have passed as a prop and the project component is responsible to set the selected project. So that's why the container component is smart because that is handling all the business logic. So I hope all of this makes sense to you. And guess what? That is pretty much it for this video. I tried to explain the container presentational pattern to you with a really simple and minimal example and I hope you liked it. Show me that you liked it by pressing the thumbs up button, subscribing to the channel and also commenting to let me know how you feel about this whole series and what would you want me to cover next in this series. As always, happy coding. I'm gonna see you in the next one.